Apple meeting. Oh. Or I'm having some tech issues, so I will be on my computer, but I'm here staring intently at my phone until my computer decides to function again. Got it. All right. So I'm not the chair of this committee. And in fact, I cannot be the chair of this committee, but it is my responsibility as president to call this meeting to order and to run the election for the chair and then turn the meeting over to the chair. I will be available to run the slides, and so forth. So let me start by, um, first of all, greeting you all. Good evening. It is January 25th, 2024. This is the inaugural meeting of this council's Governance Organization and Legislation Committee. Based on open meeting law, we're allowed to continue to hold meetings remotely without a quorum of the council physically being present in the room. Um, if you have technical difficulties, please let me know. In, in this case, you can either text me or you can say it on the screen. Um, given that we have a quorum of GOL present, I'm calling the meeting to order at 7.33. I'm going to ask each of you if you can hear me and I can hear you. Uh, and let's begin with um, hmm. Patty Angelis. Hi, I can hear you. I'm present, I think. Uh, Anna Devlin Gothier. Present. Councillor Ette. Present. Councillor Ryan. I'm present. And Lynn Griesmer is present. So the floor is open for nominations for the chair of GOL. Uh, and I am um, see a hand up, and it's Pat DeAngelis. I nominate Anna Devlin Galthier. Oh. Okay. Anna, not Anna. Anna, right. do you accept the nomination? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Are there any other nominations? By the way, you can self-nominate. I'm not seeing any other hands. Anna, would you like to make a statement? I don't have much of a statement prepared. Um, thank you, Pat. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the vote of confidence on your behalf. I think sharing is something that I have not yet done on the council and I am really excited about the work of GOL. I think that it fits, well, it, it fits my nerdy, the nerdy part of my love of council really well. Um, and so I'm very excited to finally be on this committee and I would be thrilled to chair it. Uh, I think that it would be an exciting challenge. Hold on one second. Or oh, are you writing that down? No. Oh. <laughs> um, I just, somebody wants to get in and I'm trying to tell them where they okay. can find that. <laughs> uh, and in fact, at this point, there are any number of people in the oh audience. Oh my goodness. There are 11. It's the most we've ever had at a GOL meeting, I think. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> so given that there are no other nominations, are there any counselor comments at this time? That's just like vote. Um, I'd like to make one comment, and that is I fully support um, Athena, I'm, I'm sorry, Anna in this role, mm -hmm. and I'm willing to help in any way that I can, but I also hope that somebody will step forward as vice chair and that we will find a way to have a good team for this. So with that, I'm going to call on people to vote. Anna Devlin-Gothier. Um, Lynn, would you put a motion on the floor, please? Yes, um, I'm going to move Anna Devlin Got that we elect Anna Devlin Gothier as chair of GOL. Second, DeAngelis. Second, DeAngelis. The motion is on the floor. It's been seconded. I'm going to go to a roll call vote. Anna, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Pat, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Councillor Ette, how do you vote? Yes. Councillor Ryan, how do you vote? Aye. And Lynn Griesmer, I vote aye. Anna, the meeting is now yours, and oh. I will do slides for you, but you Thank need you. to get a vice I'm chair. staring down my phone currently. Uh, all right, I'd like to open the floor for nominations for vice chair of GOL. 
and I'm gonna make sure I can see everybody. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> Pat, you already nominated someone. So can I go to George first? Mm -hmm. George? Yes, I'd like to nominate Pat DeAngelis. <laughs> Thanks, George. Uh, Pat, do you accept the nomination? Uh, maybe. Okay. I don't know how to take that. I'm going to say, <laughs> Pat, would you like to make a second nomination? I'd like to nominate Councillor Ette. Um, I've, cha I've chaired, I've been vice chair. Um, I'm happy to help in any way, but I think it would be wonderful if you could... Uh, by, do vice chair. It's not as um, strenuous a job as chairing, but I think that it helps uh, prepare us for transitions and things like that. So I lo would love to see you do it, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Ette, do you accept? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> You're full of resounding decisions today. <laughs> um, okay, Pat, would you like to be more decisive in your uh I do not. I was only going to accept it if if Councillor Ette said no. Okay. So I'm very happy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, call the vote then. Uh, you want to make a can, motion? Can we have a motion, please? The nomination is the motion. I apologize. Uh, I nominate Councillor Ette for uh, Vice Chair of GOL. Second. Second. Oh, go ahead, Lynn. Okay. Go ahead. Second Griesmer. And I'm going to go ahead and call the vote, starting with Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Uh, Lynn Griesmer. Aye. Councillor Ette. Aye. And uh, Councillor Ryan. Aye. All right. My and computer. Anna? Yes. You have to vote. Oh, I also <laughs> vote aye. Thank you. Uh, my computer is on round three of the little bar loading. So congratulations, Councillor Ette. I'm looking forward to serving with you. Thank you. Um, all right, the 2024, oh, Athena. Um, I received a call from one of your constituents, one of a town resident asking if you could take public comment early in the meeting. I let them know that um, yeah. we didn't have a chair yet and I would communicate that to the committee once the committee began. Obviously we have a bunch of people in the audience. So I'm just passing on that information to you now as chair. Thank you so much. That was actually going to be one of my questions was if I could move public comment earlier, considering I think a lot of folks are here for an item that is on our agenda. Um, so if that's unless anyone has any objections on the committee, I'd like to move public comment. And why don't we do it right now before we dive into all of the other things, even though they are some are logistical. So um, we're going to open the floor for public comment. Uh, folks are welcome to raise their hand on Zoom if they would like to make public comment. We're going to take public comment up to two, mm, should we do two minutes or three. What was the norm? I apologize, folks. What's the norm for um, committees, Pat, when you were on GOL last uh, year? Three, but it depends right. on the number of people who raise their hands. Yep, understood. So we are going to go to public comment. I'm seeing three folks with their hand raised right now. Uh, four folks. What? It's climbing. Everybody get your hands up, please. So we have a rough idea. All right, so we are going to do uh, two minutes of public comment per person. So please limit your remarks to two minutes. Athena, are you able to be a timer or would you like me to keep time? Um, I will be a timer so that Athena okay. can do what she has to do. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, it will not be on the screen. However, I have to use my phone. So just give me a second to set it up. No problem. Uh, two minutes. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to bring people in and then start timing as soon as they start talking, okay? Thank you very much for helping me out with that, Lynn. All right, we're gonna start with Henry Morgan. Lynn's going to bring you into the room. Please state your name, uh, roughly where you live. We don't need your full address, just district or area of town would be fine. And uh, your comment, please, thank you. Hi, can you guys hear me all right? Yes, can. I can. Uh, hi, I'm Henry Morgan. I'm a Hampshire College student, a Northampton resident, and I serve as the executive director of the Public Higher Education Network of Massachusetts. I'm here today to ask you, as I did in an earlier council meeting, uh, to amend the Higher Education for All resolution to include the Debt-Free Future Act. The CHERISH Act is a vital part of the well-being and health of the public higher education system in Massachusetts. It invests in our future, but an investment isn't enough. What we need is a transformation. The Debt-Free Future Act would eliminate tuition and fees and create a debt-free, fully financially accessible model for access to public higher education in Massachusetts. Local community leaders like yourselves must advocate for the students and their constituencies so that we can build a debt-free future in the long term. Uh, 
Including the Debt-Free Future Act and the resolution will help many thousands of students in order to create access to higher education for all. This resolution must address both the short and long-term actionability of our legislation. The Sherich Act provides investment and nourishment for our education system, but the Debt-Free Future Act provides a long-term vision and an important goal for our movement. Please vote this out favorably and include an amendment to include the Debt-Free Future Act. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. All right, we're going to go next on the list. We have Ella. Hold Ella, on. You, oh, and Lynn, when you bring, can you just, um, if you could just click allow to speak instead of fully promoting to panelists. Okay. That way folks don't need to worry about their video. Okay, I'm going to, uh, Henry, if I lose you, please log back in, okay? Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, no, I can't do it that way. I'm sorry. I have to do something else. Here, I can leave the meeting and join. Uh, okay. I got right. it, Len. So, uh, is Ella the next person? Yep, Ella is next. Hi, Ella. Hello, if can I be heard? Unmute and make your statement. We can hear you. All right, perfect. Um, thank you, counselors, for hearing us this evening. Uh, my name is Ella Prabaka. I live on East Main Lane in Amherst. Um, I'm a UMass student, an organizer, phenom, and student senator. Um, I'm here once again to give my testimony and ask that the GOL committee amend the current resolution in regards to higher ed for all to better represent the sentiment behind this resolution, that being higher ed for all. Um, the Cherish Act is an incredibly important piece of legislation for the health of our public colleges, and I fully support this resolution um, as a necessary increase in funding for the public higher education system. However, I feel that it does not truly represent the full meaning of higher ed for all if we do not actually um, significantly improve financial accessibility uh, for public college students. Um, and the Debt-Free Future Do Act does exactly this. It would eliminate tuition and fees for all Massachusetts students at public colleges. This is direly needed given our situation right now where uh, Massachusetts has the second fastest growing student debt um, in the country and where students like myself and my peers are struggling to um, pay for our tuition while also obviously engaging in um, our academics and working jobs alongside of that. Um, so I'm asking this committee to please make that amendment um, and um, I'll see the floor to the next person. Thank you, Ella. All right, next up we have Andrew. Andrew, Lynn's gonna allow you to speak. You can unmute and you have up to two minutes to make your comment. Great, can you hear me now? We can, thank you. Thank you, so I'm Andrew Gorey. I am a Northampton resident, but I'm here in my uh, capacity as president of the Professional Staff Union, which represents over 2000 employees at UMass Amherst in Boston. So thanks for hearing our comments tonight. I'm here in support of our students that you've heard from. Um, the PSU is a charter member of the Massachusetts Higher Ed for All, which is a coalition of student groups, labor unions, community organizations, and social justice organizations that believe that public education is a public good. Together, we're advocating for a public higher ed system that removes barriers that our students face and provide the fair wages and working conditions that our workers deserve. Our coalition is currently focused on two priorities before the legislature, the CHERISH Act, which will strengthen our public education system by reversing decades of disinvestment in our public higher education institutions themselves and the debt-free future bill, which would eliminate tuition and fees for residents of Massachusetts at our public colleges and universities, a transformational bill really that would ensure educational opportunity for generations of working Massachusetts residents. Both of these bills are extremely important to us and the support of this council would be deeply appreciated. So our union proudly represents workers as diverse as academic advisors, residence directors, IT and communications staff, clinicians, psychologists, maintenance foremen, building supervisors, and dining service managers, proudly working at the Amherst flagship campus and many of us living in Amherst. What ties us together is our love for our institution and our dedication to our students. In fact, many we have of our half members, a minute. thank you. Many of our members are former students of the Massachusetts public higher education system. Through our lived experience and our everyday work, we know that our working and middle-class students are in crisis. 
state funding for public colleges has decreased by 30% since 2001, with the average public college student graduating with over $30,000 in debt. You ever have the need to wrap up? I'll wrap up right now. I'll just say that Massachusetts has the second fastest growing student debt in the country, and our students deserve better. So do the communities where they live and work. Thanks for your consideration. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Next up, we have Hallie. Uh, Lynn is going to allow you to speak. Please unmute and uh, make your comment, keeping it under two minutes, please. Thank Hi. you. Hi. Okay. Good evening. I am Haley Kelly, a former Amherst resident and the non-binary representative on the Democratic State Committee. Many people have the GOP misconception that college debt is an issue for people with high paying jobs. But as our wonderful Senator Warren frequently points out, 40% of people with student loans don't have a degree. I am one of those people, so I want to tell my story. I grew up with extremely anti-LGBTQ parents. They would berate, yell, and humiliate me anytime they found me using my name or pronouns with other people, among other frequent emotional abuse tactics. This all came to a head after my first year at UMass, when my parents forced me out of my childhood home for being non-binary, being liberal, and not capitulating to their far-right political ideology. The PTSD and other associated mental health issues that came along with it, such as suicidal or near-suicidal depression, impact my day-to-day -day life. It took over a year before I could even open the Messages app on my phone without an anxiety attack. As you can imagine, this disables my life in uncountable ways. I ultimately recognized that it was preventing me from getting a quality education and decided to put college on hold until the wounds have had more time to heal. The only reason I'm not buried under student loans today is because I was lucky enough to have my girlfriend's family take me in when my own family wouldn't. The time is now to take action so that people like me aren't left to chance, and the Debt-Free Future Act is an important piece to this puzzle. Let's be clear what the vote on this legislation means. A no vote is a loud, defiant statement that people like me deserve financial ruin, that we deserve it because we were abused by our parents, that we deserve it because of our chronic health issues, and that we, the queer youth, you have to have seconds. our lives destroyed by debt if our parents are homophobic. On the other hand, a yes vote means that you believe in equality, that every kid coming out of Amherst Public Schools deserve an equal shot at success, Need to wrap regardless up. of family background, and means that you believe in anti-bigotry. And I don't think that queer people should have their, and that you don't think that queer people should have their lines, lives ruined by bigots. Which side are you going to take? All right. Uh, next up, we have Ian. Ian, Lynn's going to allow you to speak. Please unmute and make your comment. Please keep it under two minutes. Thank you. Hold once, on one once... second. No worries. Okay. Ian, allowed to talk. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Ian Rodewalt. I live in the first district uh, up near Cushman Market. Um, I am the community sponsor of this resolution and was mostly just going to urge the GOL committee to pass this along to town council. Um, it, so it builds off of the resolution last year uh, in that I think was unanimously passed in support of the fair share amendment um, and also the resolution that was passed uh, in in support of student debt cancellation. Um, and that uh, is all that I had to say and just urge that the GOL committee pass it along to um, uh, to the town council, uh, or, or pass it out of committee. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Um, all right, next up on the list, we have James. James, once Lynn, yep, there we go. Oops, uh, sorry, I just oh. brought the wrong person in. Sorry. Oh, oh. No worries. No. Hold on. Um, I'm sorry, which one are we looking It's okay. For? James, if you lowered your hand, that's totally fine. Um, otherwise, we will go. Oh, hands back up. Uh, we're looking for, sorry, it's James. It looks like James Mayer. Okay, got it. And then sorry. Eliana, you next. Sorry I about that. Lower my hand, my bad. Can you guys all hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. Um, I would just like to thank you uh, for hearing for hearing from us this evening. Um, my name is James Meyer, and I am a student and resident of Hampshire College. I'm here today to ask you to amend the Higher Ed for All 
resolution to include the Debt-Free Future Act. The only reason that my parents are not currently still repaying their student debt at the ages of 51 and 48 is because last April, my grandmother died and my parents inherited enough money to pay off their decades-old loans. This is not a future I want and not a future I would wish upon anyone. The cost of tuition to attend Hampshire this semester has increased and the debt I am burdened with to receive a college education, something that I believe that everyone deserves, has also increased. I ask you, Council, to amend the Higher Ed for All resolution to include the debt for you tract. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Eliana. Oh, sorry, multiples. Sorry. Hello. Um, All right, and you. Yep. There. Great. Um. Thank you so much for uh, having me today. Um, my name is Eliana Stromative, and I'm a UMass student. Um, and I'm here to see and ask for the Amherst Town Council to amend the current resolution regarding higher ed to all to include support for the Debt Free Future Act. Um, I've encountered so many of my friends and people that I met in high school, some of whom were highly discouraged from going to college because of the lack of financial support that they received from their families and because of their just inability to know that they could have a debt-free future. And I, I meet all those students I meet around me, have so many powerful and strong dreams to help the world and, and to care for their communities. And education is an incredibly powerful stepping tool towards that and a debt-free future for these students would really enable them to be able to focus on their visions for the world and without having to constantly worry about the looming burden of paying their debt day by day for so many years. And it would just be incredible and amazing for these, just all these like passionate students to be able to someday like live without debt and live without that because that's something that's just talked about constantly and thank you so much and that's all thank you thank you uh next up is isabel anderson isabel lynn's going to allow you to speak and then you can unmute and make your comment please keep it under two minutes Hello, um, my name is Isabel Anderson, and I am one of the co-chairs and co-founders of Amherst College's Young Democratic Socialists of America. And I'm here to talk about the Debt-Free Future Act on behalf of the Amherst College community and those of us who support Phenom in this act. Um, I know that Amherst College and UMass are at face value very different. One is a private institution with a multi-billion dollar endowment, and one is a very important public university. But working with UMass Phenom and my own colleagues in Amherst YDSA has shown that there is solidarity between us, and it lies in the exorbitant and inaccessible costs of higher education. Because of Amherst's wealth and commitment to con supporting diversity in education, many of us rely on the institution for nearly everything, jobs, housing, food, and of course, our future. We are proud to be at our college, but we cannot afford to live in the bubble that Amherst College tends to breed. In reality, the college endowment only uses 25% of its annual spending for financial aid, and only 56% of us here at Amherst are on financial aid at all. At Amherst YDSA, we have learned that accessibility for us will only begin when we stand with public education. There are less than 2,000 Amherst College students at any given time. In comparison, there are millions of Massachusetts residents from kindergarten to college who could benefit from the enormous wealth that we have in public schools that are underfunded and under-resourced. In the town of Amherst specifically, at Amherst College YDSA, we recognize that our college has historically underserved the town it's located you have, in. You have 30 seconds. Thank you. We believe that the Debt-Free Future Act will help rectify this problem by helping students in the town of Amherst afford the higher education that our students often take for granted. The thought of taxing Amherst's wealth may seem distant or unhelpful to those in this community now both in the college and in town. But in reality, supporting the Debt-Free Future Act provides an opportunity to begin to repair the divide between our campus and the Amherst community as a whole through this statewide enforceable equity initiative. That's Thank all. you. Thank, Thank you. you, Isabel. Uh, Chrisania, you are up next. Hey, hi, uh, my name is Chrisania and I'm a student at UMass Amherst. 
Um, and I want to what, echo what everyone has said about the importance of addressing student debt in Massachusetts and ask you to include the Debt Free Future Act in the resolution with, in regards to higher ed for all. College debt is a huge struggle for so many of your constituents, including many students here at UMass Amherst. Um, so I was really glad to hear about this resolution. And the bills currently in the resolution are good first steps, but it's not enough to ensure that all students can reasonably afford college. Students' financial situations can change, and needing to work during the semester creates a lot of stress and makes it harder to succeed in college education. So for higher education to be truly available to everyone, we need to do more. And so many of my peers are struggling due to student debt and the exorbitant cost of tuition, which is only increasing. And we need to do more to end the student debt crisis. Um, so that's why we need free public college for everyone. And that's why I'm asking you to add the Debt Free Future Act to the resolution. Um, thank you, and I'll see the rest of my time. Thank you. And Eleanor? You can go ahead and unmute when you're able and make your oh, comment, okay. please. Okay, great. I'm Eleanor. I go to UMass Amherst. I live at 112 Eastman Lane. I would like to see the Amherst Town Council amend the current resolution regarding higher ed to all to include support for the Debt-Free Future Act. Affording college is a challenge to possibly everyone I know, even if someone isn't directly affected, it's their children or their friends. And I think that this would be an important step. All right, Eleanor, was that it? Yep. All right, thank you so much. Just making sure I wasn't cutting you off. Thank you so much. All right, that will conclude public comment for today. Thank you all very much for coming and sharing your thoughts with us. Um, and this item is on the agenda. We're going to do a couple things first, and then we will um, get to this, and maybe we'll bump it up a little bit to have that discussion uh, earlier on. So we're going to start with our 2024 meeting schedule. This was in the packet, um, and did will, everyone have a chance? I'll oh. pull it up, okay. Great. So while Lynn is getting that, thanks Lynn, uh, if folks would like to look at it on this screen, did anyone have any significant conflicts that they saw with this? Just to make sure that we'll plan to have a quorum at most, if not all of these meetings. And if you haven't had a chance to look at it yet, I would ask you to please look at it, cross check it, make sure all the dates are on your calendar, and then please email me if there are any days that you cannot come to. Um, it's okay, obviously, to miss a committee, me committee meeting once in a while, please be a human and do what you need to do, but we wanna make sure that we're having a quorum uh, so that we can continue meeting and doing our work. I'm not gonna read these dates off. I'm gonna make the assumption that folks have had a minute to, to check this out as it was emailed out by Athena to the council. Um, are there any conflicts that people would like to raise now out of concern that we may need to cancel a meeting? Lynn? Oh. Um. I, I can't raise my hand, but I'm also doing this, I don't think. Okay. Um, I just would like us to explore um, the possibility of meeting earlier in the evening yep. rather than waiting until 7.30. Uh, that's something I'm going to have to discuss with uh, Athena to mm -hmm. see if there's any way to make that arrangement since she is our staff liaison and yeah. she has a commitment that takes her till 7.30. That's all. Understood. Um, are are you saying that you will be reaching out to Athena on that, or would you like me to do it? Um, why don't we both do it when we meet okay. with him? Okay. okay. Sounds good. Thank you, George. I uh, just wanted to echo that. Um, I realize there are a lot of moving parts here, and uh, I certainly can live with seven thirty. But if we could move it earlier, that would be nice. Okay. I think uh, Councillor Ette and I had had volunteered seven a.m. But um, before we go to work, you know. So I'm just kidding. Uh, are are we kidding? Are you serious? I mean, I would do it. I I'm kid for the purposes of this. I am kidding. Um, uh, Pat, you're muted. Hey, yeah, this this time. Sorry, I sorry. I'm concerned because Athena was quite clear that she could we could possibly change time in April, mm -hmm. but that she has a class that goes until 7.30, so I'm not sure what you expect her to do. 
And so it makes me a little uncomfortable that we're pressuring her in some way. I think we just need to explore it with her. That's all. Well, and that see, feels some pressure to me, which makes see. me uncomfortable. If I can clarify, I'm going to go ahead and share this meeting a little bit harder and say we got to raise hands here so we don't get into debate on issues that don't need debating. I think, Lynn, what might be more helpful here is to say at after April, it might be a time to shift. Let's explore what that time is as people are looking at their calendars past April. I agree that if Athena has a class now, we are not going to ask her to do anything other than her class. Um, but that if April is the time where things shift, April is not that far away. Uh, we can explore other options at that point. But I will um, raise this and with Athena and not without pressuring, ask if there were any other options. Any other questions on this? All right, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on on our agenda. Uh, Lynn, yes. I'm, I'm, actually, I could use the raised hand function. We actually have to vote to adopt the calendar. Okay, um, so I move to adopt the 2024 meeting schedule as posted. Second. Thank you. And we will go around. This time we're gonna start with Councillor Ette. Yes. Thank you. Councillor DeAngelis? Aye. Sorry, Pat. Uh, Councillor Ryan? Aye. And Councillor Griesmer? I'm just going to go all last names till someone tells me otherwise. Aye. And I am an aye. Yes, Pat, did you have a Yeah, question? just just a quick, it's clear to me the importance of the people who have chosen to be called Councillor at a Councillor Ryan, and I feel like that's, I would like to make it simplified and have all of us uh, be called counselor, and then I will bring it up at a council meeting. But if you make that, it's not a mistake with me. So thank just you for not clarifying. Worry about it. Thank Fine. you for clarifying. Um, okay, so before we get into, uh, is there any opposition to moving our conversation about the resolution in support of Higher Ed for All earlier? Since I know that's what most of our audience is here for unless folks feel very strongly that there are other things that we need to discuss earlier on, I'd like to move to that point. Um, seeing no objections, I believe uh, Alicia Walker is with us and I believe she is the sponsor, counselor sponsor of this. Lynn, is that correct? There's no counselor listed, but I believe it was both Pat and Alicia. Yes. So, great. Um, if we could bring Alicia into the room, I also am happy to do this, but I don't seem to have the power. So just as an FYI, um, hold on like one second the, uh, and let me it. stop sharing for a moment and bring Alicia in. Hi, Alicia. I think she's in cyberspace right now. There we go. Okay. Hi, Alicia. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Lynn. All right, so um, Lynn is going to put up the, I believe, the proposal on the screen. Lynn, if you don't mind, that would be great. And Alicia and Pat, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you are um, bringing forward, what the goal is, and what you'd like from us today in our discussion. Um, I was asked by Ian Rodewalt and, um, to sponsor this and uh, Alicia and I both agreed. It is a, a way to bring resources to ensure the Cherish, Cherish Act is um, a way to bring money um, from from the Fair Share Amendment to uh, you and to use it to fund tuition, uh, to fund uh, green building. To, um, and I'm being very inarticulate and I apologize, um, but it really is committing resources to ensure um, a really healthy public education system. Uh, uh, Alicia, perhaps you have something better to add in terms of, um, it is being sponsored by Joe Comerford and um, I read all this stuff today and I've been, I, I support this, what I have a question with is the uh, student debt cancellation and adding that as an amendment because I don't I haven't had a chance to really review that so I do not feel comfortable adding that to this. Um, this really addresses also in addition to student tuition, 
and green building. It also addresses uh, salaries for and adjunct uh, faculty, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it really does a lot of really, the CHERISH Act really does a lot of important things. Um, and there, and I have um, amendments to the resolution to make, which, so that's, that's what it's about. And I wanna remind the committee, we don't deal with substantive issues. We deal with clear consistency, clearness, consistency and actionability. Um, Alicia, do you have anything to add here? Sorry, having trouble unmuting. Um, I think Pat actually did a really great job of summarizing. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, briefly, it is basically like um, signifying our support of the Cherish Act, which is already legislation that is at the state level. Um, so that's what this resolution would be. Um, and I know that uh, we had a lot of public comment about the um, higher education for all portion that's not currently involved. And I, I did hear Pat say that we don't necessarily deal in this committee with like the content of the resolution, but I, I would be interested in hearing uh, feedback because I think that that's an important piece and whether or not those two like whether or not this resolution is amended to include that or we have a separate resolution that deals with that, um, I think I would be interested to hear the feedback there if that's something that's possible to also be discussed. Thank you, Alicia. Um, I wanna confirm, Lynn, that the, the referral to GOL, the automatic referral to GOL is for simply clarity, consistency, and actionability. That's correct. Thank you. So if we were to discuss our, I think as Alicia was mentioning, are we allowed to discuss the merits of the um, proposed addition that hasn't necessarily been proposed by the sponsors in any way? Or does that need to be posted as a separate agenda item because it wasn't necessarily part of this or it isn't in this resolution? I mean, it, it's a gray line. I, I don't like to be so strict about this that we can't even mention yeah. it. Um, okay, I'm going to think about it for a second. George? Yeah, I think what I just need is some clarity. Um, I'm not, so the, the therefore is to pass the Cherish Act. Correct. That's the resolution. And it sounds like the sponsors actually have something else in mind that they would like us to do. And I'm, I'm you know, perfectly open to that, but we need some language. Uh, unless so I'm not understanding this, I assume that there's a desire on the part of the sponsors to change the that clause at the end and something to the effect of including, I don't know what the language would be, it's really not my job to come up with language, but um, that's my understanding is that's what's happening. The other thing is in the one, two, three, fourth paragraph, I think there's some issues of clarity, just language, but uh, I guess the first and most important question is what exactly do the sponsors, what are they asking the council to resolve to do and, so I, yeah please i think well first off i think that the um i guess pat if you don't mind i want to share my take on it if it's okay so the the sponsors have introduced this with their community sponsor and they are um they are asking us to review it for clarity consistency and actionability we currently don't have a motion on the table to approve this for clarity consistency and actionability mm -hmm. once we had that motion I believe that what the sponsors were considering was making an amendment to include the Debt-Free Futures Act, um, but that is not currently in this resolution as presented. Am I understanding that correctly, uh, Councillor Walker and Councillor DeAngelis? You're muted, Pat. Yeah, no, I'm, for, I, ju I just wanna make a quick um, correction. The Cherish Act, it's, it's um, we are amending this, legislation that Joe Comerford is proposing is amendments to chapter section chapter 15a of the general laws. It's not a new law in and of itself. And I just want to say that. Um, the other thing is I don't know whether I'm willing to sponsor this change because I don't haven't spent time with it. Um, and I as a sponsor, being a sponsor is very different. Yes than just saying, oh, yeah, it's clear, consistent, and actionable. I can do that, whatever our committee decides. But I I feel like I have lots of corrections on this, uh, which basically are minor, but I'm not ready 
to say I'm going to uh, uh, sponsor. That's fine. There is no motion on the table and you do not need to make an motion to amend. Um, Athena? Uh, the sponsors can withdraw yeah. the, the resolution and then work with the community members and other folks to, to add or change it and bring it back to the council when they're ready that, as an option. Thank you. So yeah, if, if you and Alicia wanted to take that under advisement, um, you're welcome to do that as well. Councillor Ryan, and then we'll come back to you, Pat. Yeah, I'm sorry, I meant to lower my hand. Okay, Councillor Ryan. Yeah, I think that would be a wise thing to do. I think for the those in the audience, um, I've served on this committee for three years um, in the past, and I don't think that has changed much, but I will certainly be enlightened quickly if it has. Um, the way it, it has traditionally worked in my experience is that the sponsors bring a document to us that is pretty much what they would uh, want. We go through it together pretty much line by line. Um, and uh, just for clarity, consistency, and actionability, and largely it's an issue of clarity. Right. And um, we work together. It's not an adversarial uh, sort of thing. Um, we make suggestions, and if we have any, and then at the end, we vote. Um, so it sounds like this is not quite ready for prime time. I don't think it's wise to try and wordsmith this uh, in the meeting right now, um, but I look forward to it coming back um, in the form that the sponsors want it to be in, and I look forward to having some of the folks present so that we can work together to uh, craft this in a way that we all can agree, and then we can move it on to the council. Thanks, George. Actually, I disagree. I don't think the sponsors need to withdraw this if um, unless they plan on changing it. Uh, they're, they're two separate bills. There's no reason why they couldn't pass one for each. Um, Alicia. Um, thank you, Anna. My interpretation was the same as yours. Like, I don't think we have the intention of withdrawing, but I was just hoping due to the feedback that we've had, that if we could have the conversation as to what that would look like, if it makes sense in terms of clarity, actionable, sorry, I forget what exactly we're reviewing the document for, if it would make sense to have this be a completely separate resolution, or does it actually make sense if we're going to come back next Joel meeting with a completely new resolution to have these be together is basically what I'm looking for that feedback from you all but not necessarily looking to withdraw or stop the momentum on the resolution supporting the cherish the cherish act all right thank you I'm going to share my opinion which is that I think this resolution as it stands in support of this one act should move forward and we should continue with our review and if the if the council sponsors would like to return with a second uh, unless they would wish to withdraw it right now, um, that they should return with a second resolution, but that we're not going to edit this on the floor right now. All right, so uh, I'm going to make a motion so that we can discuss this. Um, right, we can. I have to make the motion before we discuss it. So I'm going to. Is that true? If we're finding it clarity consistent, even no, though the I motion would come it, yeah. after after our review be done either way okay thank you so let's um let's pick through this and what i'm realizing is i want to have lynn are you planning to edit this or would you like me to make the edits on my no, end i'm planning to edit it amazing so glad you're here okay <laughs> uh councillor DeAngelis. yes i have a few uh a few corrections one right. after every whereas which um, one oh, i'm so sorry pa can i pause you um oh, yeah. Peters, i just realized something um you had a, a community sponsor for this i believe um that's ian yeah ian, i'm gonna ian i'm gonna um bring you into the room as well if that's if the, if you want to raise your hand if you'd like to be in the room for this discussion knowing that we are not discussing substance we are only discussing clarity consistency and actionability all right Okay, I apologize. I, I would like to include community sponsors in um, in discussions yeah. when we are going through. Yeah. All right, Pat, what were you saying? Uh, after every whereas, we need a comma. Great. Um, Great. And then after, uh, and I started to do it earlier and then I realized I was changing a document, which I shouldn't have. After the end of each statement, after each, we have semicolon and then there, there needs to be an end which there are in the first two hang on one second um lynn i think we might need to have track change do we need track changes on or is it just we we bring our version to the council so it doesn't matter yeah i think we're fine like this excellent um lynn did you catch pat's second comment um, yes let me get done with the first Amazing. one 
Okay, and then in, came after it's a semicolon and an and. Yeah. Right here is missing an and. Yeah, the rest of them will be. And I, I want to apologize. I didn't look at this because this I should have corrected as a sponsor, the kinds of things I'm showing, uh, saying now. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a... Yeah, in the few, I mean, this is our first... And normally... Meeting. Yeah. Uh, generally speaking, it would be it'd be great if we could kind of picky people um, the resolutions. As yeah, they I kind of took a vacation. I apologize to the committee. How dare you take a rest? <laughs> it's okay. Um, thank you, thank you, Pat. Uh, uh, Councillor Ryan. Oh, were you done? Oh, wait, I'm not done. Okay. Uh, if we go down to the therefore. So excuse me, but after the last whereas, it, it's a period, right? Yes. And then we go to now, therefore. Yeah, and that's part of the correction is to say now, comma, therefore, be it resolved. Whoops. And what I wrote is um, that the town council of Amherst urges the legislature uh, that call the town council of Amherst calls on state leaders and legislators to pass bill um, S816, bills S186 and House 1260 to improve public higher education in Massachusetts. And uh, give me the bill number. To uh, bills to pass uh, bills or it, it's two of them, Lynn. S-816, which is the Senate, and House-1260, uh, to improve public higher education in Massachusetts. Is it called the Cherish Act? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, Pat, does that cover it for now? I think so, yeah. Thank you. Um, George, if it's okay, I'm, oh wait, no, we haven't, you haven't spoken on this yet, so we will go in order. Uh, Councillor Ryan? You're muted. So I don't see where in this, it actually provides a description of the act, um, and maybe I'm just missing it, but, um, I would think somewhere it would say, whereas, and then it would briefly describe what the act is going to accomplish. Um, is that in here? And I'm just missing it. Um, it it's so uh, you're asking the council mm -hmm. to endorse a piece of legislation, which is not actually briefly described in the resolution. Uh, I think the sense of it or the overall purpose is in here, sort of, but um, that was just one observation. Um, the title says resolution in support of higher ed for all, um, which is fine, but the resolution is actually apparently in support actually of the Cherish Act. Um, maybe that again for the sponsors is they don't mind, that's okay. But I guess two thoughts. One, I'm just uh, would kind of like the title to represent what it's actually asking us to do. And secondly, I would think there should be somewhere in here a description briefly for the counselors and for the public um, as to briefly what this act is is doing. Um, and then at some later point, I'd like to come back to paragraph four, but um, that's my first sort of just quick note. Thanks, George. I'm going to go to Athena and then I'll make my comment. Thank you. Um, typically, the council, when they're uh, writing and passing a resolution in support of an act, they will include at the end um, to, that the clerk of the council shall cause copies to be sent to the legislators. And I, I didn't see that in this one. So that just pointing that out is a consistency. Thank you. Athena stole mine. Um, all right. <laughs> I was so proud of it too. Uh, so that was my question was typically when we when we call on folks, we're actually also calling on only our own legislators in my recollection. Is that not true in other folks' recollections? Typically my understanding is that Sometimes. we are, oh, sorry, go ahead, Athena. Sometimes. 
sometimes you'll send it if it's in committee sometimes you'll send it to all the committee members or the senate president it's up to the council or the sponsors how they want to write it who they want it to be sent okay thank you um, uh, yes i was going to ask ian to come forward and um uh, to address george's comment which i think is pretty important and I also Thanks. I had one other thing, which is in addition to calling it the Cherish Act, I do think at some point we should spell out the full name of the bill, which is long. Uh, and yes, it is. The higher education <laughs> and the resources to ensure a strong and healthy public higher uh, education system. Right, we just, see that right. spelled out um, in here so, as well. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's the Cherish Act. Colin. It's an act. <laughs> the actual name is your Kalen. Yes. An act. <laughs> Committing to higher education, the resources to ensure a strong and healthy public higher education system. And then I would do... Uh... Education system. And that's the actual title. And I would do comma the Cherish Act, but Cherish should be all in caps since it's yeah. Thank you. All right, I'm done with my comment. Um, Ian, did you have a comment to make as well? And then um, I my earlier comment was just going to be that the what what you just uh, covered in terms of it being an acronym, um, and and what it was the acronym for. Um, I think George, that is a good point that uh, there's. About, about not having a line in in the whereas is of uh that goes specifically to the um the name of the bill uh i i'm wondering if if we could put in something that, as simple as whereas um the cherish act commits commits to higher education the the resources to ensure a strong and healthy uh public higher education system Okay. Um, I would like to move this discussion, George, I am gonna to get to you, but um, I'd like to move this discussion along if we're not ready, just because we've got a very meaty agenda and I know we wanna be out of here at 9.30. So if we are not ready to declare this um, clear, consistent and actionable, actionable, we will need to move it to our next meeting. Um, in the next, we're gonna see if we can get this done in the next five minutes or so, but based on the amount left on our agenda, I'd like to continue to move us forward. Are there any um, other edits? Yes, Lynn. I Sorry. need to understand what the rest of your statement was, Ian. It's a strong and what? Um, a strong and healthy public higher education system. I'm sorry. Okay. Hold on. I have one other edit I need to make because of that. Okay. And the other thing that's left is, um, this which we can ask it's usually the governor lieutenant governor and um senator comerford joe comerford and Rep. representative mindy dong um Councillor Ette has his hand raised. Sorry, Councillor Ette. The uh, penultimate paragraph has ensure a strong and health, which should be healthy, higher education system. All right, uh, Councillor Ryan. Uh, 
Councillor Ryan, you're muted. Sorry. No worries. Is it the intention of this act to make tuition essentially free for all colleges, community colleges, et cetera? Is there something, because that would be very dramatic and specific language that um, I just don't know. I, I apologize. I just don't know. But um, that what Ian has proposed is nice, but it's it's pretty just sort of, you know, broad. And that may be the language you want. Um, but my, I'm just wondering, a question, is, is this legislation meant to basically make college uh, free for everyone in the Commonwealth? No. It's not. Uh, it's, not it's more complicated than that. And so to try and, and um, okay, all right. Uh, we're going to go to Councilor. No. Oh, okay. I was uh, just going to say no. <laughs> I was uh, just Councillor Graceway? No. What this, uh, having worked in higher ed all these years, what this is trying to do is send a message to the legislature that they need to better fund public higher education across all 29 public higher education institutions. Uh, the separate one is the one that other people have spoken to tonight, and that's the issue around tuition and student debt. And I'm not sure if I have this correct for our format. So um, I just want to make sure that Athena at some point may have to add a little change in there. Okay. Um, all right. The only question I had was, and I'm curious, I, I think GOL went around and around in this last year. And so I, I apologize if I'm opening up a can of worms that maybe some folks are relieved was closed, but whenever we have statistics in and really specific statistics or shocking statistics in resolutions without citations, um, I think that this committee needs to think about whether or not we expect to have citations in our resolutions or whether or not we are taking statistics at their, at their word um, when we put them forward. So I think Ian, that's my way of asking you where these name numbers uh, came from. I think it was specifically the tens of thousands of, of students are putting off college. Um, I'm curious about the words putting off. I'm, I know that that means they didn't go to college right after high school, but for, uh, is it tens of thousands that go later on or don't go at all? That, that phrasing is a bit, um, I think, ambiguous to me. Uh, in terms of the intent of this bill. And to be clear, I support the Cherish Act and I'm, I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm clear that I'm trying to make this stronger. Uh, so I'm curious where those numbers came from and if we should, and, and to my fellow committee members, if you believe we should include um, citing our sources. So Ian, if you've got a thought on that. Um, I don't have that particular source in front of me right now. Um, I could get back to you, uh, but our, our goal is is to sort of pass this resolution sooner rather than later. Um, so if it would be. Uh... It's not a deal breaker for me. Okay. I think it's something, um, but that's me personally. Um, I think just looking at DOE numbers, I understand how it could be true if like 64% do go, you know, whatever the, the data is. Um, but I think that Generally speaking, I guess I'll ask the committee if that's something that we should be seeking now or in the future. If people have concerns about it. Uh, I think having citations is good. Um, when I was looking at some of this today, I went on the Progressive Massachusetts website and I didn't correlate the things that they were saying with the statistics that we, that are in this. and um, But I can do that. Um, but I, that would mean postponing this. I don't know that it's necessary. I, I am not proposing that. If someone else would like to, that's that's their prerogative, but I am not. Um, Councillor Ette. Um, I've been in support of... Uh, going forward having some kind of citations for okay. yeah. our sessions thank you and ian and then we're going to wrap this puppy up um i was just going to say if uh not having a citation for this clause would um uh would prevent gol from from passing it out to town council i i would propose maybe scrap scrapping the clause 
I'm not, I will not propose that. I don't think that it impacts the clarity, consistency, or actionability of this. I think that if we're setting a new parameter for consistency that we would like um, citations in the future, we can set that for the future, but I'm not, I'm not introducing it now. Um, all right, I am going to make a motion. Um, Ian, for what it's worth, that may be brought up or asked for at council if you want to look up those mm -hmm. citations. Um, all right, so I will make a motion here. Um, I move that the GOL committee declare the resolution in support. Ah, Lynn moved her thing and I can't see the title. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's not your fault. <laughs> I have it up on my screen too, but if I have everything, it's anyway. Uh, the resolution in support of higher ed for all by passage of the Cherish Act, clear, consistent, and actionable. I can't remember what I started saying at the beginning of that sentence. So hopefully that motion made sense. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call the vote. This time we're gonna start with Councilor Ryan. I'm going to abstain. Okay. Councilor DeAngelis? Aye. Councilor Ette? Aye. Councilor Griesmer? Aye. And I am an aye as well. All right, so this will move to the council for further discussion. Um, Com committee members, if you have any questions about this that do not relate to uh, clarity, consistency, or actionability, I highly recommend you email that to the sponsors ahead of the council meeting so they can address them. Councilor Ette, did you have another question? I'm wondering. You're good. Okay. I'm wondering, since we've moved forward with this, what does that do to the amendment proposed by some of those who spoke tonight in uh, public comment? So no amendment was proposed by the council sponsors. So no amendment is in this resolution. Uh, I would urge the folks in the audience who were seeking that amendment to reach out to these council sponsors or other councilors or whoever you might want to reach out to, to see about introducing a uh, second resolution. It is possible for the council to amend it. Um, it wouldn't have necessarily been appropriate for that amendment to come before GOL because it wouldn't have been about the clarity, consistency, or actionability. It's a substantive change and we aren't dealing with substance. So if that amendment is going to be made by a counselor, uh, I believe that the council meeting would be the appropriate time to do that. Does that make sense, Councilor Ate? Does that answer it? It does, thank you. Yep, no problem. Um, Ian, thank you very much as always for joining us. And uh, thank you for your time and review of this. Absolutely. I'm trying to, uh, Ian, if I exit you. I can do it if you want, Lynn. Oh, okay. She made you co host. Yes, I got powers now. Got it. All, right. Um, all right. So, so I can and, do audience hey, management if you want to share screens. That'd be. I will share screens. Does Alicia want to leave the meeting? And yeah, let's Alicia, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to bump you back to the attendees. All right. Um, so we are going to move on. Thank you all very much. Look at that. We did our first thing. Well done, everybody. Um, I'm vamping while I pull up my agenda. Sorry. All right. So we're going to move on to the um, review of the carryover men, men, items um, on the carryover memo. And we're very, very lucky because we have the former chair of GOL here, who I'm sure between Lynn and Pat, uh, Athena might not have to correct me as often as she would otherwise, <laughs> hopefully. So um, Pat, because we have you here, would you mind walking us through just briefly this carryover memo? Um, and otherwise, I'm happy to talk through to read each point. Well, and I think I can slim it down uh, okay. if that's uh, basically uh, these are measures that we uh, realized we needed to carry forward for a variety of reasons. Uh, the, and there is a series of measures that were automatically carried over. And one of those is the Amherst Black Reparations Committee charge, which we are going to be uh, looking at and setting up. Um, we wanted to also this over time review the process and timing for the town manager evaluation. Um, and uh, also we have, and we're working on that, I believe tonight, some the appointment recommendations for the charter review committee. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are uh, other committees that have been working on specific 
bylaws or amendments that are going to be carried over um, on the amended nuisance property law. Uh, yeah. The proposed amendments to general bylaw, uh, the refuse collection and recyclable materials or waste hauler bylaw is it uh, now called and the amended street lights policy. Um, items that we believed should be carried over. Um, are the amended proposal for the establishment of a transportation commission. Uh, on, ongoing, we will have a review of the town council rules of procedure. Um, and any if that's something we might take up early or don't have to, but we keep track of uh, councillor comments and councillor questions. And then um, rec and we also have to deal with the recommendations for the appointments of the non-voting finance committee members um, who are resident members. Uh, and that's coming up. And then there is a small, and George will smile about this, bylaws for future consideration that comes from the bylaw review committee. We have eliminated most of them. Uh, I see your hand, Athena. Do you want me to? Yeah, Athena, go ahead. The GOL got through them last year, Pat. No, yeah, we did, but we didn't. But what's left over is what the town manager has not returned to us. Right. Mm -hmm. So the town manager has some that he's waiting on some staff recommendations. Right. He would have to bring those to the council before they go to GOL. They might need to go to other committees. And then there was one other thing. The council referred to GOL, the proposed legislative process guide. Um, that oh, that's Dr. right. Baldwin yeah. Thank forward. you very, that's very much. That's not on the memo because yeah. it, it was um, carried, it was referred on that last council meeting day. Yes. Thank you. So there's kind of a, a bunch of stuff to do. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, articulately put, thank you, Pat. We have plenty to do and I'm sure we'll get plenty more. Um, are there any questions on the carryover memo? So I think my plan, um, full disclosure, I was not fully, uh, expecting to be voted chair, even though I think I was warned that someone might nominate me. Um, and so I am not necessarily prepped up with how I wanna use this carryover memo, but I think um, I'll, I'll share my brain process with you, uh, which is that I'm gonna sit down maybe with Athena and Councillor Ette and look at the year and try to map out um, when we think things will come back to us and what we can start to kind of tackle when. Um, and so I'll, I'll try to come back to folks with a rough idea of when things will be on the docket. And we're gonna try to, um, some things obviously need to happen uh, you know, today, starting today. Um, and then some things will be um, interspersed throughout the year and some things we're waiting to hear back from town staff in, in one way or another on, but I'm gonna try to get a better handle on that um, if that's okay. Yes, Councillor DeAngelis. Uh, I was gonna encourage both you and Councillor Ette to uh, go on to the, uh, the SharePoint GOL. George, George Ryan from his uh, year as chair did an incredible uh, compilation of documents and processes and things that are really valuable to look at um, and are still relevant. It's very intimidating being here with two former GOL chairs. I'm not going to Yeah, lie. well, he was good and I was okay. So don't worry about it. No. Oh, um, if there are any of, if there are no questions on the review of your items, I'm going to move forward in the, all right. So uh, next up on the agenda, we have some very exciting drum 2024 review committee appointment reference to the town. Um, I'm getting a little notification that my internet is unstable. So I apologize if I'm choppy. I'm going to, I'm staying with you though. So the first thing that we need to do in this process, is, I'm gonna turn my camera off for a moment, see if that helps. So the first thing that we need to do in this process is determine uh, that the applicant pool is sufficient um, in order to move forward. Athena, I'm gonna lean on you a, a bit here just to confirm if that's something that you bring to us once, I, I'm guess I'm not sure at what point do we determine it, it is sufficient. 
So the, the committee can look at the number of applicants. You should all have automatically received CAFs, but I can compile those. They're not public documents yet. So if you're reviewing them, please don't share them on the screen. Right now there are 12 CAFs received for the Charter Review Committee. Um, and then the committee determines if the applicant pool is sufficient. You'll, you can refer to the council policy on making recommendations to um, council appointed multiple member bodies. And it lays out the process for what the committee has to do at each step. Um, you declare the pool sufficient. You set an interview date. You have to let candidates know that they need to submit a statement of interest or a yeah, the statement of interest. Mm -hmm. um, there's a deadline for those. You can continue to accept statements of interest even up until the interview date, but um, it's all laid out in the in the policy. Okay. So I encourage you to read that. Later. Thank you so much, Athena. Uh, Councillor Ryan. Yeah, I took a look and I came up with seven. Um, so Athena obviously is much better at this than I am, and maybe this isn't the time for us to get into the details, but. It would be helpful for all of us, and I think particularly for the chair, to know exactly how to track these CAFs down. I thought I figured I knew how to do that, and I only came up with seven, and apparently there are 12. And that's something that all committee members can access. So maybe Athena at some later date, or maybe now if it's simple, or maybe Lynn can tell us how you can track these down accurately, because I thought I had done it, and I clearly did not. Thank you. They come in. They come in through your counselor email. Um, okay. I can. I put in a search. Yeah, I put in a search for, uh, you know, with that title and started with charter review, and uh, seven popped up, and that was all I found. So. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I can I can pull yeah. them I can pull them off the back end of the of the town website and then put them into SharePoint. But like I said, they're not public, so I can't put them. Exactly. Obviously, I can't put them on the screen right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I can. I can compile them into a folder for you so that folks can review. Typically, in other committees, um, they'll take a look at the demographics to the extent right, that folks right. share them and try to determine if that's a representative sample or if they want to wait and see if they get more applications. Thank you, Athena. It would be really helpful if you would be able to compile them into a, into a SharePoint folder um, if it's not too much of a hassle. Um, yeah, sure thing. I can I can do that for the next meeting. Yeah. Thank you so much. And then I think what what I'll say is if if for the next meeting folks can take a look at that folder um, and just do a quick glance at it to get initial impressions of whether or not they personally feel that that is a sufficient pool based on what they see, um, we'll have that discussion at the next meeting. Councillor Ryan. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Councillor. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Councillor Greesmer and then back to you. Sorry, Councillor Greesmer. Yeah, I, I just want to point out in general, um, we like to have at least two for every seat. Right. And there are nine seats on this commission. Uh, I think we need to spend a lot more time uh, advertising and bringing in some more candidates. Thank you. Personally, I agree. Councillor Ryan. And just a suggestion to you um, as chair, which you do not have to follow, but you could also delegate it. Um, and that's also an option. Um, it's important, I think, that when people make these applications for positions that we're considering, that someone, usually it's the chair, but it could be someone else, get back to them within a day or two, just saying, we've gotten, you know, we've received your application for position X and uh, give them some very broad sense that we'll be back in touch very short, but just, uh, letting them know, because um, I think sometimes people do this and then they don't hear for a week or two or three weeks, and it's not anyone's fault. Right now, we're going through a transition, so things don't happen quickly. But I wonder if you'd consider, once you see the list that Athena's put together, um, if you would reach out and just say, thank you very much, and we'll be back in touch. Uh, thank you for that suggestion, George. Lynn, or uh, Councilor Griesmer. Uh, Athena, because we did not have a chair, Athena has been doing that up to this point. Right. Yeah. Uh, and Anna, if it's helpful, I'll be glad to do that since I am reading all the emails anyway. Um, I don't mind. I think it sounds simple enough to reply to folks. Um, and, and Athena has some stock language she yeah. uses. Okay. okay um, yep. I, I think it's a it's a good suggestion, George, and, and I can do that. Um, I think that in addition to that, I would ask everyone on this committee 
Um, my computer has stopped sounding like it's going to launch itself into space. So I'm going to try my camera again. Um, I, if everyone on this committee could also make sure that they're doing outreach to their constituents, however you typically do, really encouraging folks to um, to submit in a CAF for this um, for this uh, role, that would be that would be great. Please, please do. Um, oh, Councilor Ryan, did you have another question? We're probably getting to this and I'm jumping ahead, but timeline, just someone give me a, yeah, what's, I think April 1 sticks in my head for some reason, but maybe that's not true. It is okay, but yeah. So Lynn, would you like to expand on that for the group? Yeah, I mean, the, the previous GOL and uh, the council did pass a um, charge for this group. The hope is that we can seat the group by April 1. Uh, technically, they have uh, a year, uh, and they could ask for an extension, but the desire would be that they would finish their work within this council and bring it to the council. Um, so the other yeah. thing I, I just want to mention, and that is that Athena, uh, early on, um, has volunteered to staff this particular committee and has been spending some time as part of her graduate, her master's program in preparing for that. Um, thank you. And I would like to also, for the interest of making sure we are always clear, CAF, we keep using that phrase, it stands for Community Activity Forms. Uh, and that is the form used for several different multiple member bodies in town, um, not, uh, and, and including this one. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So it sounds like the action plan going forward. I don't think we need to take any action on this tonight. Uh, what we are going to do is at, by our next meeting, um, we are going to take a look in the SharePoint folder that Athena will um, create. And just again, we, we're not going in depth. The, the, the um, community activity forms don't go in depth. Uh, the statement of interest will be much more, much more in depth, but what in depth, but what the CAFs do offer is a look at some demographic information. So we can ensure that we have a pool that not only is a large pool, but also has some depth and variety that represents our town as we um, create this critical uh, and important and inaugural committee, which is exciting. All right, any questions on what your homework is before that? Okay, yes, I'm giving homework this year. Okay, um, so the other things on here, we need to think about a uh, selection guidance and interview date. Are folks prepared to start talking about this tonight or would you like to wait until our next meeting once we've taken another look at the um, charge? I would suggest waiting. I would okay. suggest giving us some time to right. um, and look at the documents in SharePoint that, uh, that have been out there. So that's my suggestion. Thank you, George. If mm -hmm. anyone would strongly believes otherwise, sorry, their ladybugs keep uh, dive bombing me in this room. So if you see me flailing, I'm not losing it. They're just ladybugs everywhere. Uh, all right. Unless anyone, welcome to me chairing a committee, everybody. It is slightly <laughs> chaotic. All right. So unless anyone has something else about the charter review committee that they would like to discuss tonight, going once, going twice. Okay. Um, all right, we are going to move on to uh, non-voting finance committee member appointments and the recommendation to town council. So first question, again, I apologize. I did not pull the CAFs for this either. Athena, do you happen to know? Um, we're, we're first determining the sufficiency of an applicant pool. I don't remember seeing more than one or two of these come in. I believe we have three. One of the applicants um, applied to, I think they put in finance committee and CD zoning board of appeals and the charter review committee, if I recall correctly, but um, I'm just gonna say, I'll do the same thing for the finance committee that I'm that I'm doing for the uh, charter review committee. I'll compile those and add them to a SharePoint folder for you. Thank you. Um, for this committee in general, I know this might be the only time to do it, but it also might make sense if you have the interest in creating some sort of filter in your mailbox to automatically send CAFs to a folder, that might also be a helpful tool. 
Um, so it sounds like, while we know we have good numbers, we have one open spot uh, on finance committee, one resident member spot on finance committee that is open. Um, so while numbers wise, three might fit our kind of informal rule of more than two per seat, um, it, it sounds like what would be best for us is to take a look at those CAFs and ensure that we've got some diversity amongst the applicants that we're um, looking at. Councillor Griesmer? Um, I happen to have looked at this and we do have a diverse pool. Um, and um, I, I'm having said that, I would like the rest of the committee to look at it. And, but I think we should try with, at, if at all possible, uh, at our next meeting to set up the interview schedule, et cetera, for this, because with the financial stuff that's going to start pouring in, the sooner we can bring this person on, the better. Any other thoughts or questions about this? Is anyone else? Councilor Griesmer, are you saying you would like to discuss it today? No. Okay. No, I'd, I'd prefer other people to also look at the pool yeah. and see if they feel it is diverse. Okay. Okay. And so, well, Councillor D'Angelis? No, I didn't hear the last thing Lynn said. I said diverse and sufficient. Thank you. All right. So to confirm, at our next meeting with regards to both appointments, both Charter Review and Finance Committee, we'll be verifying the sufficiency of the pool. And for Finance Committee, we will be determining the schedule. Mm -hmm. um, great. Sounds good. Thank you. So similarly with this, we need to think about the selection guidance. Um, because we've done finance before, I would like to take the time between meetings to look back at the last finance committee appointment that we did um, and, and check in on what happened at that point. Um, I would encourage others to do the same, but I will, um, I'm committing to being up on that. Um, and then we will set the interview date for, for those um, as well. Yes, Councilor Griesmer. The very last one was a reappointment and yeah. we didn't really spend much time on it. So you wanna go back to the one before that. Okay, we did have multiple candidates though, correct? Or am I um, of the one before that? I think it's the one before okay. that that we did, okay. yeah. Um, all right, and I will, uh, maybe it sounds like I'll talk to Councillor DeAngelis, who was on GOL and Councillor Griesmer to try to narrow down the date that that was so that we can find that information. Um, all right, we're already packing these agendas, y'all. So next meeting, we're gonna talk a lot about selection criteria. Um, all right, we're gonna move past that. We already did the resolution and support. Okay, so 2024 council liaisons to multiple member bodies. Uh, GOL, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this and I'm going to count on all of my folks to fact check me here. GOL is responsible for determining which committees receive liaisons uh, which, to recommend to the council which committees receive. I always recommend, I know we don't actually do anything, but we recommend which committees, sorry, <laughs> which committees will receive liaisons. Um, this process in the past, I don't think has had a ton of consistency. And I'm going to speak candidly that I think this could be, this is a process that I think we could really streamline. Um, liaisons, uh, committees do not automatically get them. They, when they request them, we determine it. So what has happened in the past is that um, I believe what has happened in the past is that we do a list of all multiple member bodies in town and look at which ones Ah, which ones have liaisons um, and which ones, uh, and then we do outreach to see who would like a liaison. Lynn, Pat, George, is that, or Athena, is that true to your recollection? I believe it's in the rules. Um, I think the president is supposed to send emails to committees, town committees, asking if they'd like liaisons. And then individual counselors also give the committee feedback about which committees they'd like to serve as liaisons. I mean, sometimes we get into the situation where our committee wants liaison and there's not a counselor willing or able to serve as one. Um, but that's the first step. The president is um, supposed to ask for interest from committees. The president, not the chair of GOL. Okay, thank you. Um, so Lynn, is that something that you, because we have the president here, um, is that something that you plan to do in the near future? What's your timeline for that? I, we absolutely need to do it. I, I also just want to say as much as we've 
reached out to all of them. Boy, I have, I think we could end up with a flood of requests and I'm very concerned about that. Um, so I would like, I, at this point, I believe we have eight committees that we have liaisons to. In reaching out, I would like this committee to give me some guidance um, as so that I could actually say in the email, you know, while we're reaching out to you, we have a limited capacity among counselors and we will only be selecting X to Y number of committees to which we will provide liaisons. And because I really, in, I hear increasingly the committees would like that connection to the council. Athena? Um, I suggest that the committee, when having that conversation with the president, look at the role of liaisons and the council's rules to clarify what the liaisons are there for so that when you're asking committees if they'd like to have a liaison it's clear what what they're what they're asking for yes yeah uh councillor deangelis yeah a, a quickie thing last year um i suggested the liaison for the rec recreation uh commit commission or committee um and I did that because Alicia and I were very interested in uh, uh, setting up a possibility of programming for a youth empowerment, not a youth empower building a building, but starting that. And nothing, nothing much happened. It was not a committee that really needs um, a liaison. Um, so I, along with reaching out to committees, I think, um, we really need to reach out to counselors in two ways. One, there are real limits to what a liaison does and several counselors do not follow those guidelines. And if that's true, then they then they perhaps shouldn't sit on a committee uh, as liaison. Um, and you know, maybe I'm saying this to the president because you appoint or we appoint them or whatever, we but- becomes problematic when a counselor participates as a member of a committee. Um, and I need, we really need to address that. So the, the rules on liaisons are governed in the rules of the, the um, procedure. And so those, uh, any counselor can pitch to change those if they would like to, but at, they stand as they are written now. I agree. Um, that was one of the things that I was going to say was I, in the email out, um, I think it's helpful, and I think Lynn, you mentioned this, of clarifying what a liaison is there to do. Um, and when we talk about it at council, clarifying that, and also clarifying that counselors can attend as a member of the public without being a liaison. Right. Um, and that in fact, if they would like to be speaking at meetings as a member of the public, uh, that they should be attending not necessarily as a liaison. Um, I, I'm curious about the thought as we think about the committees that want liaisons, and maybe I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but I think one of the ways that we could also use to prioritize for counselors, it could just be on, based on counselor interest. It also could be based on alignment with uh, the town manager goals. And um, if we have determined our priorities, we can kind of base it off of that. But I think, you know, to your point, Pat, not every committee needs a liaison. And I think, um, while we do have rules, there are there's still a little leeway within them, and and so different liaisons liaise differently. Um, so I think that that could be something that this committee decides when we are looking at once we get the requests back. Um, I'd like to propose that as the framework that we use to determine which committees we prioritize for liaisons. Uh, Councilor Griesmer. Yeah, I, I think that's a very good uh, qualification that we need to look at. The, the other one that kind of goes with that is which committees are most likely to ever have something that actually comes to the council? And I mean, you know, for, for example, the Shade Tree Committee is very unlikely to have something that comes to the council. So that's that's a criteria to add to that. That's all. Thank you. So, OK, what I'm going to ask for counselors to do is before our next meeting, uh, please think about what criteria we might use. And if you have suggestions, either jot them down and bring them or send them to me, um, but have them noted for yourself. Uh, if you've got criteria uh, around the um, kind of recommendations for, for priority of liaison committees. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm thinking about too is when we 
reach back out to say which committees did not receive liaisons, I think we should also include how they can advocate for themselves to the council without a liaison. Um, because I think that can be a really incredibly, incredibly helpful thing for some committees who maybe thought their liaison was their advocate, which is not the role of the liaison. Um, I don't know, I, it's, it's a half formed thought, um, but if we can also share, we know you didn't have a liaison, you can still interact with the council, here's how. Um, I think that would be helpful as well. Because I don't want committees to feel cut off from the council because they don't receive a liaison. All right, any other questions on this? Okay. Um, all right, we're gonna move forward. Um, oh my gosh, who built this agenda? Patricia. All right. No, so, I did not. No, I did. Me. And let me just say, I, the only reason I put the other committee charges in there, which is, I think, what you're looking at, is at some point. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hi, 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 Sandy. <laughs> um, at some point this year, we should be reaching out to each of the committees to have them review their charges. I don't think there's an urgency to that. Excellent. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that that yeah. item. I'm going to move it down the road a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, actually, well, let me rephrase. Is there any reason why we can't send an email to the committee chairs once elected saying, please do this at your on your time frame? Okay, great. I will, I'm gonna add that to my list. I'm gonna let go of my dog. And if she runs off and barks again, I apologize. Yeah. Um, committee charges. And is there a date that they need to have done this by? Whatever you want to do. It looks like you had a thought on this. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, Councilor Griesmer, go ahead. Whenever whenever the committee wants it. Um, I, you know, most of the committees are, you know, there's even some that, there's two committees that haven't even met yet, or maybe there's only right. one, there's one, okay. Um, so. Okay. Uh, all right, Town Council Rules of Procedure. So this last year, uh, I believe that GOL took a painstaking time and really delicately went through the entirety of the Rules of Procedure, seeking out edits that they felt needed to be made. In the interest of the time of this committee, I would like to propose, and I'm open to not going this route, I would like to propose that we remind the council that any councilor can pitch a change to the Rules of Procedure and should they see something they would like changed to bring it to GOL. Uh, and we will discuss specific recommended changes brought forward by counselors or including members of this committee. But I do not think that given what we have on our plates already, uh, that it is a good use of our time to go through the rules of procedure line by line. Is there any objection to not doing that? Okay, seeing none. Uh, I will make that reminder in my report back to the council. Oh, Athena. Okay. Um, <laughs> the next item on the agenda is the proposed legislative process guide. Okay. Um, so the, George, why are you smiling? The proposed legislative process guide, um, I think I was the only member of TSO that, uh, uh, is on this committee. So this was proposed by a previous counselor um, and was brought forward as a guiding document for counselors to use in understanding the process of making change as part of the council. Um, it was referred to GOL because when we looked at it at TSO, um, and I, I'll speak on my own behalf as a former member of TSO, much of what was in the process guide felt as if it could be a rule change. Um, however, the sponsor at the time uh, explained, and I'm gonna look to Athena to, to correct me if I'm getting any of this wrong, explained that it was intended to be a recommendation, not a um, policy. That said, it was referred to GOL from TSO, or from the council, excuse me, uh, to review for a substantive review, I believe, is that true? Athena, thank you, I'm, I'm floundering here. Yep, it's a sub substantive review because there were, um, there's obviously some, some technical language in there 
and the council felt that they wanted to make sure that it was actionable and um, it was Councilor, uh, Councilor Alumnus <laughs> Bob Milne who proposed this to TSO. I actually spoke with her this morning and she asked that um, the chair, once the committee had elected a chair, let her know when the committee will take it up again because as a community advocate, she wanted to um, make sure she participated in the conversation. She feels really attached to the guide as a, as a useful process for both counselors and members of the public to understand the legislative process and when and how they can interact with the council and the flow of uh, legislation through the council and the advocacy points. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I don't believe it was in our packet, so we're not gonna dig into it quite yet, but if we could put it in the packet, let me let me figure out the calendar, I will tell you. Um, it is definitely a, 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 a hefty document, so we wanna make sure that we've got time to really read it and absorb it. And there's a lot of, um, there is a lot of helpful information in there. Uh, Athena, you unmuted, yeah. were you? I, when, when, yeah, when, when, when Lynn and I were talking about the GOL agenda, I think we, we put everything on there, <laughs> not expecting okay. the committee to get through everything. So this I'm was- looking at the clock, like we're gonna make it. On, <laughs> this was specifically on there because it wasn't on the carryover memo. So I, there was no expectation that you were gonna get through a review of the whole thing. I didn't think we were. Thank you. Um, Councillor Ette. Um, what is the distinction between a policy and a recommendation? Yeah. If a recommendation is um, something that we don't have to follow, although it might be useful as a guide, how much time would be suitable to spend on it? Good question. A really good question. Um, I think that is up to this committee. I think that what I'm going to say is we should, uh, I'm going to look at the calendar and figure out where it makes sense to put it. But prior to that meeting, I do think we should all read it and kind of come in with that question in mind. Um, and thank you for framing it that way. Does that answer? I know I, I, I know I went right in a circle around it, but does that respond to what you were saying? It absolutely does. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Athena, I'm going to let Athena cut always. So sorry, Athena, go ahead. Oh, you shouldn't let me cut always. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All um, right. Usually it's because you're going to correct something I just said. <laughs> so I, that's usually why I go for it. No, not at all. Um, I, I wanted to point out that the council did take an action on the legislative process guide. They referred it to GOL. They didn't table it indefinitely. They didn't say they didn't want to adopt it as a guide. So I think that is as a council action, that is the council saying that they would like GOL to spend some time on it. But yes. um, I think it's worthwhile having a, a thought about how much time. Absolutely. And we will and we will have to report back to the council. What that report says will be determined by this committee, but we do have to report back by, what is it, February 26th? Uh, Councillor Ryan. Athena answered my question. All right, great, thank you. Okay, so um, I've got some calendaring to do, it sounds like, but uh, generally speaking, I'll wait and I'll put it in a packet. I won't um, just send it to you willy-nilly. Okay, so we already did public comment. Y'all, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm feeling pretty, pretty confident that we're gonna get out before the posted end of this meeting. Um, are there any other topics? I don't have any uh, topics not reasonably anticipated. We've got a lot to do. I just wanna recap what is happening before we adjourn uh, to make sure I've got it. The, the report writing is what I'm mo dreading the most of this um, chairing role. And so I'm trying to take copious notes, but I'm looking to my committee to support me in this. So we have elected our chair and vice chair. Uh, we have determined the resolution in support of the Cherish Act, clear, consistent, and actionable. We did a brief review of the carryover memo and I will be looking at um, the agendas for the future to try to map out where things will go to agenda. Um, we are going to look at the CAFs at the next meeting that we have. They will be put in a folder in SharePoint. They are not public documents. Please do not share them. Uh, I will start replying to new CAFs that come in specifically for the Charter Review Committee and I think the Finance Committee too, right? Because that's the other one that... Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we would like to seat the group by April. So we'll need to talk about the timeline for that at our next meeting. 
Also at the next meeting, we'll, we will be verifying the applicant pools uh, to see if they're sufficient for the finance committee and determine the schedule for them as well. And uh, I urge everybody, but I will for sure look back at the past two appointment process, uh, processes, look back two appointment processes ago to see the selection criteria. And if people have selection criteria, please bring that to our next meeting. Lynn will be sending out an email to committees to ask who wants liaisons. And, and in that email, we'll clarify the role of the committee liaison. Once we have that, we, will, we as GOL will have the discussion based on the priorities to determine what committees we are going to recommend to the council receive liaisons. I am going to once, oh, Athena. On the issue of liaisons, it might also be wise for you, Anna, to ask counselors for their feedback. This was brought up at one of the first council meetings, but counselors letting GOL know which committees they'd like liaisons, they'd like to be liaisons to, would be helpful for the committee to make that determination too. Um, yeah. Yes, please, Councilor Grisman. I'm sorry. I, I, I want to raise my hand and be proper. Um, I think once we, I think we should do the outreach. And at the same, and then bring things to the count. I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm very concerned about this particular thing because one, it's been stated earlier, we've had some counselors that have gone beyond what liaisons do, and second of all, we don't have a lot of bandwidth to be liaisons. So. I'm not sure I would start with counselors. I think we should start where we're supposed to start and then see where we end. But, you know, I I can be overruled on that. I think that my thought is there isn't a reason why we can come forward with a list of, you know, the eight committees that we believe should get liaisons or however many we come up with. And then a counselor says, I would like to be a liaison for X committee. Is there any reason to say no to that person? if they are seeking to be a liaison? No. So it wasn't a rhetorical, I actually was curious. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in that case, I don't know that it's necessarily a need to do it right now um, because I think that we'll kind of come to that determination, but um, okay. I, I, let me just also add very quickly, there are some counselors who are very, um, attached, if you will, to the committees they've been liaisons to. And frankly, they've continued to be in touch with them. So, um, and I think that's fine. We had a counselor ask about that the other day. Okay. Um, next item was committee charges. I will email the chairs of the, of the committees once they are seated and ask them to review their charges when they're able. Uh, question, does this include, this only is for council committees, correct? Thank you. Just double checking. Oh yeah. Um, in my report, I will and I will state this again that the GOL will not be going through the rules of procedure line by line. But if a counselor would like to propose a change, they can bring the wording in its final form to GOL, and we will review it as uh, as that comes forward. And then legislative process guide. Um, once I know, once I've got a better grasp on the calendar, I will um, make sure that that is in the packet. So you all can review it and we will go from there determining what we are going to report back in terms of a recommendation on how to act on that guide to council or how or and if to act on that guide to the council. Once I have a date for that, I will also reach out to um, Shalini Ball Milne, former counselor who authored it to make sure that she is in the loop. Is there anything missing from that list of um, what we covered and action items to take away? All right. With that, it is 9.15. The calendar said 9.30, so I'm counting this as a win, uh, even if in my own calendar I put it till nine. Thank you all so much. Uh, I am very, very excited to serve on this committee with you, and I think there's a lot of wisdom, and I'm really looking forward to being course corrected by all of you at all of the points that you will need to do that. Any last comments before we adjourn? I thought you did a very good job. Thank you. Excellent. Even when the ladybug was actually biting me, I managed. That's, that was very courageous. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Courage. Yes. Nice work. <laughs> nice work. Counselor DeAngelis, I think you were muted. I don't know. I'm sure you were just singing accolades, but. Um, no, I was saying ladybugs don't bite. Uh, this one did. This no one did. Worries.
This one did. Then it was something else. All right. Thank you all so, so much. I will see you at our next meeting. Don't forget to do your homework. Have a lovely evening. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.